my name's Peter, Peter Brownell. Um, Mario and I are both part of a small uh, Drupal consultancy called Code Positive, and we also run the London Drupal user group. So we twice a month get people together and help them share the pain and the joy of working with Drupal. Um, I've got a kind of introductory presentation to just tell you a bit about stuff, run through the kind of ideas, and then after that we'll be um, going through a kind of setting up a Drupal site from scratch, which may or may not work. Uh, there, there are various things to it. We'll be distracted by your questions and we'll try to do things for you on the fly. But um, generally we'll try to show you that most things are easy with Drupal, but with like any stand, any package, some things are easy, some things are not. But we'll, we'll get there a bit later. But hopefully this will be useful and we'll get you, get you set up to actually realize what can be done. So we made this handout last year for Linux World. This is on your desks, well, on your chairs. Uh, that should help you get the basics of what we do. And then I'll come along here and do something. Okay, so uh, Drupal, it's been around for about six years. Uh, started as a university project by some guys in Brussels. And Dries, who started, is still at university as a PhD student, but Drupal's gone far beyond that. So from being a small dorm project, the name actually comes from a misspelling. Uh, they originally, the guys who wanted to sort of register Dorp, which is town in Dutch, but spelt it wrong and got it's a drop.org rather than dorp.org and then converted the English back to the Dutch and so we end up with Drupal. There's no other reason for the name. It is called Drupal because it's a misspelling and then we, we got the drop. So Drupal is a modular CMS system. It, it allows you to add and remove various components and then manage your content for a, a website. It, each of these components are generally rather small. In fact, as Drupal evolves, the various components are getting smaller and smaller. One of the things you have to learn with Drupal is there's no way for you to say install media capabilities. It's, there's no one big module that does everything. Drupal works with lots of small modules that you then tie together. So it is an extremely modular uh, system. It's also a framework. It connects all sorts of different pieces. So although, for most people, if you want to use Drupal to build something, you use it as a content management system. You install some modules, plug things together, and then build. It is also a very flexible application framework. You can very cleanly build your own extensions to Drupal that require no hacking of the core. You never have to worry about damaging your upgrade path. To add features, you can very, very clearly plug them in if you understand some PHP. Drupal is written in PHP, it's all open source, nobody owns it. There is a community of a, well, yeah. not only is Drupal a framework, it is also a community. As much as anything else, any open source software that works and used by lots of people can't exist without its community. The, the people involved, the people who drive it, are very much the same thing as the system. You can't, if you really want to use Drupal and you really want to get involved, you should really be part of the community. And that's why you run our user groups um, twice a month to give people as much opportunity as possible to get together and learn how Drupal works with other people. Because it's run by so many people, Drupal moves and changes pretty quickly. So if you don't stay in touch with what's going on, you find you'll fall behind a bit. And that becomes more important if you're doing bigger projects on Drupal. If you're running a blog, it's not that much of a challenge. Uh, but for bigger projects, you need to be involved with what people are. So two years ago, our Drupal conference looked like that. Uh, people from all around the world. This is some of the developer community. Um, about 150 or so people arrived at our conference in Brussels. This year, we went to Barcelona, and we had quite a few more people. Again, this is just a small fraction of the actual people involved in the whole community. This was generally the core developer community. Um, We've now got to Drupal 6 coming out, hopefully in about a month. Um, and with every release of Drupal, we've seen a growth, uh, massive jumps in the number of users we get. So we, 
this, this is a graph of how Drupal, the core Drupal, has grown in the last few years from 2005, September, till April this year, um, which is just after we had launched version 5. So we launched Drupal about every six months. There's no real cycle for it. In fact, it's getting faster. We launched Drupal 5 in February. Okay, so it's slightly longer than six months. We're now about to launch Drupal 6. Um, what do I have next? Drupal, center of the community is Drupal.org. Uh, Drupal.org.uk will get you our local site. One of the things Drupal lets you do is, well, change the way it looks and feels. You have a very clear division of the way that the theme layer works and the way the software layer works. So you can chop and change and divide up the work so that yeah, if you don't want your site to look one way, you can change it to work another way. So I've got a few examples. Drupal.org looks like that. MTV.co.uk looks like that. And then The Onion. Uh, also they're all on Drupal at the moment. And so they're all decently different in the way they work. Uh, granted, most of them are quite heavily customized, although Drupal.org isn't. Um, MTV's got a decent amount of customization. And The Onion have their own internal development team, and they did a bunch of stuff. But they still keep up to date. And there's still lots that you can do to evolve and use the platform. Um, yeah, so we've generally like to promote the way, well, we made this handout last year uh, to say that what Drupal does in this modular manner is allow you to work with flexible but structured content. So you get to create your own content types rather than being restricted to something like a wiki, which it's just open text, you can put in what you want. With Drupal, you can structure how you want your content to work. So you can create various fields, and then you lay them out as you want to. So you can make sure that people enter content in a structured manner, which then lets you database it, index it, and chop and change it. So with various tools we showed just now, you can then take your content, and then you can rearrange the way that you want to display it in all sorts of different ways, based on various input. Uh, and you could output in for various themes to RSS, uh, you can plug in extra modules, and you can really work with an open, flexible framework. Uh, I think now my next part of my presentation is says that you don't necessarily, yeah, Drupal's a powerful tool. There are some things you should be aware of before you decide to get out there and jump into it. So, although this is very much a sales pitch for why Drupal's good, you need to know why using Drupal in the first place. Because, yeah, it is a power tool. You, you know, if you really want to do big things, Drupal's your tool. If you really want to do little more than run a blog, then perhaps Drupal's not the best tool for your job. There are some really good tools that you run a blog. They're simple to install. You set them up, and they work. If you want to use Drupal, you've got to be able to tinker. You got to, well, and you want to really use it to its your best advantage. You want to commit to it and understand it and then you can start to really see the benefit. Get involved in the community um, and keep going. Drupal might be a free bit of software, but it's not free for your time. You're going to spend time because, first of all, it does draw you in. You have to learn how stuff works, keep working. If you're a company and you want to use Drupal as your own platform, you ideally should be willing to invest and keep evolving. Because Drupal moves fast, you have to keep working with it. It's a kind of long-term relationship. You're going to have to get involved and, and realize that you can't just do something once and have it work. Because you, as you work with an open source system, as you use Drupal, new things are coming out. There's new modules and new capabilities. You really should be willing to say, OK, if I'm going to use this, I'm going to keep using it. And that way, I can get the most from it. Um, but in the end, we're here because Drupal rocks. <laughs> nice pun. Um, and, <laughs> and we really believe in it. And for the last few years, we've done nothing but Drupal work. There's no reason for, for us within our, our work things to use any other system. <coughs> uh, in pretty much every scenario, we can use it. And we can make Drupal bend, bend backwards and forwards and whatever which way we need to do to make it achieve the tasks we want to do. Sometimes it's harder, sometimes it's easier. Uh, but that's just the way it is. Bit by bit, as we keep evolving, we can get there.